Uh, our next presenter is MedCrip from Solana Beach, California. MedCrip brings cybersecurity features to medical devices from pacemakers to surgical robots in a few lines of code. The FDA expectation to bake in security into connected devices means the best solution is one that proactively secures devices. Build secure devices quickly and reliably with MedCrip. MedCrip, the floor is yours. Thanks, Ken. Hey, everybody. My name is Mike Kajeski. I'm the co-founder of, of MedCrypt, uh, talking to you from San Diego, California. So it appears, there we go. Sorry, I'm having a technical issue with my slides. Um, in 2014, I was working at a medical device manufacturer when I learned that a hospital was concerned that a high-profile patient they were treating might be the target of an assassination attempt by a nation state in which an attacker would use a cybersecurity vulnerability in a medical device to assassinate this patient. Um, I had never thought of this as being a possibility, but it turns out that this is a real concern for this one particular hospital. So I learned that uh, historically, most medical device vendors assumed that hospitals were responsible for the cybersecurity posture of their networks and the devices on their network. Therefore, they didn't build any security features into their devices. Um, this isn't really a great strategy, as hospitals are not in a great position to defend themselves from cyber attacks. In fact, it's in the news right now that the FBI and Department of Homeland Security warned that a Russian hacking group is attempting to disrupt the networks of 400 hospitals in the U.S. using a ransomware attack. Um, even if hospitals were able to prevent these sorts of attacks on their network on medical devices, more and more medical devices are designed to be used at home by the patients. Uh, and therefore, the hospital's network security controls are really not that meaningful. So now medical device vendors need to build security features into their connected devices before they even leave the manufacturing facility in order to be viable in the market. Uh, hospitals like the Mayo Clinic are refusing to purchase devices that fail their own internal security audits. Um, and the FDA has demanded that medical device manufacturers meet their new cybersecurity requirements before their devices even be approved. So we asked ourselves, how could a medical device vendor build a medical device quickly and efficiently that was secure by design? So what we did is we took all of the security recommendations that the FDA had made and put them behind a software API. So a medical device manufacturer building something like an insulin pump can build security features like cryptography, behavior monitoring, and vulnerability tracking directly into their device. We allow medical device engineers to build security features into their devices in a couple of hours that would otherwise take them years, if not decades, to build into their devices. We want to help medical device manufacturers build devices that are secure, quickly, and reliably. Uh, we charge our medical device manufacturer customers a SaaS fee per device that we are securing. The FDA is finalizing their cybersecurity pre-market guidance in early 2021 requiring every medical device vendor to build devices that are secure by design. The estimates of the medical device cybersecurity market size vary from $1 to $10 billion per year. And most of the companies looking at healthcare cybersecurity are exclusively focused on network security for hospitals and are not helping medical device manufacturers build devices that are inherently secure, meaning that our biggest competitor Uh, thanks so much for that. My my question, uh, Mike, is is just talk a little bit more about um, your fee structure and revenue model. You said you charge a SaaS fee per device. Is that I assume that's just based on each device that hits the market rather than devices sold? But just talk to me more about revenue and, and margin opportunities. Yeah, so we're literally monitoring the behavior of specific devices out in the field. So if we're monitoring a thousand devices for a particular manufacturer, we can charge. N times a thousand for that particular manufacturer. Now the fee that we charge a device manufacturer depends upon the number of devices they're going to ship and the risk associated with that particular device. So for example, a surgical robot that is very high risk connected and has literally knives connected to it, that has low volume, uh, some of the leading surgical robotic companies sell a hundred units per year, we might charge a thousand dollars per device per year to secure that device. For something like a sleep apnea device, a CPAP device, very low risk, very high volume, we might charge a dollar per device per year. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Josh, I believe you have the next question. 
Yeah, hey, Mike. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep, yep. Okay. Um, great presentation. Thank you again. Um, I can go into the product a little bit more. I, I understand the customer problem did a great job in articulating that, but but is, are we saying this firmware and then you're, you're doing reactive logging or is there a proactive element? And then how do you stay ahead of where these vulnerabilities are going? Because obviously it's a constant moving target, right? And so how do you protect from that penetration? Yeah, great question. We have three main products, one that is focused on cryptography on the device. So we have a security library we give to a manufacturer that they compile into their firmware to call an API to get access to cryptography functions like sign and verify, encrypt, decrypt, generate keys, check public keys, those sorts of cryptography functions. We have a second product that is focused on passive monitoring of what these devices are doing. So the devices send us metadata about uh, you know, an instruction that they got to deliver a certain bit of uh, medication uh, and, the, the, for example, whether or not the signature verification passed or failed. We don't need any PHI. We just need to know if the transaction was successful or not. And then we have a third product that's focused on tracking known vulnerabilities in common software libraries and mapping them to vulnerabilities in specific devices. So, for example, you tell us you're using OpenSSL in your, li in your library, in your software. We tell you when there's a new OpenSSL vulnerability. Very good. Other questions for Mike? All right. Mike, thanks very much. Did a great job. We appreciate it. Thank you.